The good news for George W. Bush, he won the presidency. The bad news, he has five weeks to hire 6,000 people and seven weeks to draft a federal budget. Can he pull it off? We'll ask his chief of staff designate, Andrew Card. Bipartisanship. Democrats and Republicans are talking so sweet, you'd think it's Valentine's Day. But how long can this love affair last? We'll ask Republican Senator Don Nichols and Democratic Senator John Kerry. Some Democrats are complaining about the Florida elections. Are they race baiting or exposing a scandal? Congressman J.C. Watts and Harold Ford Jr. will debate. Plus our panel, Fred Barnes, Cece Connolly, and Juan Williams on the December 17th edition of Fox News Sunday. Good morning. Welcome to Fox News Sunday. Let's get the latest on a busy weekend of appointments for President-elect Bush from Carl Cameron in Austin, Texas. Carl? Hi, Tony. Well, it is one down and 13 more cabinet secretary picks to go for President-elect George W. Bush. Time magazine has named George W. Bush its man of the year. And for Bush, in naming Colin Powell his pick for Secretary of State, the, the president-elect referred to the retired general as the best face his administration has to offer the globe. Wherever he goes and whomever he meets, the world will see the finest of the United States of America. It is an historic first. They will say that Colin Powell, the first African-American to ever hold the position of Secretary of State. And I'm glad they will say that, and I want it repeated. I want it repeated because I hope it will give inspiration to young African Americans coming along, but beyond that, all young Americans coming along. Before leaving for Washington Sunday afternoon, Bush plans to elevate several top campaign aides to key White House positions. Condoleezza Rice will be National Security Advisor, Larry Lindsay, White House Economic Advisor. Others include Karl Rove and Karen Hughes, who will be top political and message advisors. The vice president-elect set the stage last week for Bush's visit to Capitol Hill by meeting with congressional leaders. Bush, in Austin, held his first meeting as president-elect with a Democrat, Louisiana Senator John Bro. Monday, Democratic leaders will meet with Bush on Capitol Hill, and Vice President Gore and President Clinton will get their courtesy call in Washington on Tuesday. Bipartisanship is the priority for the Bush team now, and they say they assume, indeed expect, the Democrats will meet them at least way. By the same token, the Bush team says conservative Republicans who are looking for a right-leaning agenda should be prepared to give the president-elect some latitude, understanding that the 50-50 partisan split in the Senate and narrow GOP majority in the House could constrain Bush from advancing conservative initiatives. And they point out, for a Republican president, it does not mean he should start acting like a Democrat. Tony? There's one important complicating factor for President-elect Bush. He has less than five weeks to pick 6,000 appointees. And once he takes office, he'll have 13 days to draft a budget and present it to Congress. And oh yeah, he's got to do these things in a way that won't spoil relations with Capitol Hill. How will he pull it all off? We'll ask his designated chief of staff, Andrew Card. Fred Barnes of the Weekly Standard and Fox News joins the questioning. Mr. Card, let's begin with an immediate question, which is the matter of faithless electors. There's been talk about trying to flip a couple of George W. Bush's electors. Have you been in touch with all your electors, and are you certain that none of them are going to vote for Al Gore? Uh, we've had a team that's been working with our electors. I'm pretty confident that they're going to vote for uh, Governor Bush to be the next president of the United States. We call him the president-elect now, and I'm sure that's the right title, and he will be called president on January 20th at noontime. Okay, so there, there have been some hints that maybe some people had, had been offering money or that sort of thing to get people to switch. Do you know anything about that? Well, we've heard a couple ugly stories, but uh, hopefully... Uh, People aren't violating the law and trying to interfere with the process. And I'm, I'm confident that uh, George W. Bush will be the legitimate president-elect when the electors cast their ballots and that he will be the president of the United States on January 20th. Now, the president-elect says that he wants to reach across the, the partisan divide. A lot of people are interpreting that as meaning that he has got to water down his views to appease liberal Republicans and Democrats. Is that what he's going to do? 
No. What he'll do is he'll talk about the same agenda that he campaigned on. Uh, he has the ability to work with people on both sides of the aisle, Republicans and Democrats. He demonstrated that in Texas. Uh, he has an agenda, though, that he's talked about with the American people. They have confidence in his agenda, and he has the confidence and the ability to lead uh, with that agenda. And he'll take that to Congress, and he'll work with both sides of the aisle to bring that agenda to reality. It's not going to be easy. We have a divided Congress, but we have a president that will unite people behind what is good for America. And we know that the education reforms that he's been talking about, the tax reforms, the social security reforms are very important. They're good for America, and they aren't based on any one philosophy. They're based on what's good for this country. Uh, Mr. Card, let me ask you about the strategy that uh, the White House will follow under President Bush to get these things enacted. Let's start with taxes. Now, he proposed a big tax cut. Uh, others have said a better strategy. In fact, House Speaker Denny Hastert has said a better way to go would be to do it in increments. Uh, will he go for a big tax cut, or will he uh, do it incrementally? Well, first of all, we're very concerned about the economy. The economy is fragile, and we think that we need to do something to make sure that there is a relatively soft landing if the economy turns real sour. But we also want to have a quick jump out of that sour spot in the economy if we have to have it. And the best way to do that would be a tax cut. A big so one? we'll or be pushing for a tax cut. A large one, or, or will you do it incrementally? You know, perhaps start with ending the estate tax, then ending the marriage penalty, and moving on from there. Well, we'll work with Congress to make sure that the ultimate goal is achieved, and we may have to do it in different steps. But the bottom line is we want an across-the-board tax cut. It, it'll be the best thing for the country, and it'll be the best thing to make sure that we can have a good economy. Will John Bro help you with that? I think John Bro will help with a number of our legislative issues. Uh, he and the governor had a very, very good conversation uh, this past week. And it was very substantive. They got into details on education, Medicare reform, Social Security well, reform, let me, tax reform. Let so me, I think it was it's good. And, and Senator Bro will help the president-elect in this period of time. And there's every expectation that he will help the president uh, after the president takes office. It's a matter of strategy. Uh, president-elect Bush talked on the campaign trail about a prescription drug benefit that was a lot quite similar to a, a bill that Senator Bro had authored in the U.S. Senate. President Clinton vetoed it. Would it make sense strategically to simply take that old bro bill, dust it off, and send it up to President Bush and let him sign it as a sign of bipartisanship? Well, there were a number of initiatives that had the support of Senator Bro and even Senator Lieberman that uh, were consistent with the policies that uh, Governor Bush talked about during the campaign. And as president-elect, he talked about with Senator Bro. I think that we can t work with a number of those issues and fine-tune them to better reflect uh, the principles that Governor Bush wants to bring to reality. So I'm confident that there is something upon which we can build and bring uh, new reforms to reality. Mr. Card, uh, John McCain said, uh, has said that campaign finance reform should be a top priority, and, and in fact, he will bring it up initially in the Senate. Uh, is it a top priority for President Bush? And if not, what's he going to do about Senator McCain? Well, during the campaign, as you know, George W. Bush did talk about the need for campaign finance reform and election reform. Yeah, We've not seen, much, though. I think you're going to find that we'll work with Congress to find something that would truly reform the system. We don't want to have it such that it uh, is not, I'm going to say, equal across the entire spectrum of political opportunity. We, and we'll be working with Senator McCain and others, but it's going to be a healthy debate over campaign finance reform. We know it. There are other forces besides the president and uh, John McCain, and we'll have to deal with those as well. So let's talk quickly about some of the issues during the campaign. Then governor, now president, well, he's still the governor, but we'll call him president like Bush, was posting contributions almost instantaneously on the internet. Yes or no, would that be part of a reform that he would like? Uh, yes, it would be. Uh, oh. He has practiced uh, everything that he talked about during the campaign. As soon as people make contributions to the campaign or to the uh, re-election uh, re effort, or, I mean, I'm sorry, the recount effort down in Florida, or even to the transition support, or we've been posting the names on the website. Does so, he also uh, support the, the proposal by Senators McConnell and Torricelli to put together a commission to try to modernize voting equipment around the country? I think that's something we're definitely going to look at. We'll, we'll be talking about election reform. I would point out that Governor Jeb Bush in Florida has talked about election reform in that state, and clearly it's something that we'll be looking at uh, to address pretty early in the administration. The governor's been criticized for not having mentioned it in his speech Wednesday night. Or well, Why didn't he mention election reform after this grueling 36-day election? Well, he was focusing on the issues that he talked about with the American people during the course of the campaign. And that's what 50 million people did when they went to the polls. They voted for Governor Bush because of what he had talked about in terms of bringing an agenda to America for America. 
And this was a, uh, an effort that will have a purpose to it. You know, he wants prosperity with a purpose, and he's going to bring that prosperity through a tax cut and Social Security reform and prescription drug benefits. So those are the things that he talked about during his speech this past week. Hey, Mr. Card, uh, Jesse Jackson called uh, the president-elect a couple days ago and talked to him on the phone, as you know. Uh, now Jackson says he wants to be someone who works with the, uh, the president-elect and then the president to build bridges to uh, minorities. Uh, does a president like Bush really want Jesse Jackson, after all the harsh criticism uh, by Jesse Jackson, to be part of his effort in reaching out to minorities? Well, President-elect Bush is intent on being president of all of the people. And he'll be reaching out to different segments in our society that feel disenfranchised to bring them into the system and to make sure that their votes are counted and that they are heard. Uh, but he'll be working with the leaders throughout America, including Jesse Jackson, but there are other African-American leaders that he'll be working with as well. Well, does he really want to sit down with Jackson and discuss this, as Jackson says? Well, when the president-elect and Jesse Jackson spoke, they did talk about getting together, and I think we'll try to make that happen over the course of the next uh, six or seven weeks. Now, you mentioned disenfranchisement. Does that mean that the governor thinks that some black voters were disenfranchised in the most recent election? Well, I really don't believe that they were. First of all, there was a phenomenal turnout of African-American voters, especially in Florida and, and Michigan and Illinois. So I think there was greater participation in this process than there has been in some of the past elections by the African-American community. But we want to make sure that uh, we take a look at all America and that all America understands that President Bush will be representing them in the Oval Office. Well, George W. Bush has talked often in his public career about reaching out to blacks, and he pointed with some pride to the fact that he got 27% of the black vote. In a